In this video, we're going to build a basic calculator for Tkinter using object-oriented programming. Hey guys, John Lauder here from tkinter.com, and in this video, we're going to build this basic calculator using Kinter and object-oriented programming. Now, we've built calculators several times in the past on this channel using functional programming. Now we're going to build it out using object-oriented programming. So for the last few videos, we've been looking at class-based object-oriented programming, and this will be a nice little example of putting all that into practice. And this is obviously a very basic calculator. It just has addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. But it should let us take all the things we've learned in the last few videos on object-oriented programming, put them together into one app, and learn some really cool things. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this tkinter series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a file. I'm calling it class underscore calc.py, and it's our basic object-oriented starter code that we've been using for a while now. I've got it set to 500 by 800. So a nice, decent size. So let's come down here. And the first thing we want is an entry box to go across the top of our app. So I'm going to call this self.my underscore entry. And this is going to be an entry box. And we want to put it in self. We want the width to be, I think, about 25. And let's also give this a font of Helvetica with a size of like 24. So that'll make it nice and wide. So let's go self.my underscore entry dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of like 20 to push down the screen a little bit. Now we have a decision to make. We've got a lot of buttons to create, and that's going to be a lot of code just to define the buttons and also to put them on the screen, right? So normally, if there's just a few widgets, I'll go ahead and put them in our init function. But like I said, there's going to be a lot of widgets here. So I think we're going to create a new frame to hold the buttons, right? So I'm going to call this my underscore frame. And we want to pass in self. So now outside of all of this class code, let's create a button frame class. So this is going to be a class. We want to call it my underscore frame. It inherits the frame widget stuff from tkinter, right? And we want to define underscore underscore init underscore underscore. We want a self and we want to pass in parent as well because we want to use all of the stuff from our app class up here, right? That's going to be our parent. And then inside of here, we need a super with an underscore underscore init underscore underscore parent. Now I talked about all of this stuff in a couple of videos ago when we first started learning about classes with tkinter. So if you're confused by this, go back in the playlist, watch that video. It's like the first one in this playlist, I think. And that should sort you out. So let's self dot pack this guy. And I don't want any pad Y. I want it right underneath the button. We're going to do any sort of padding with the buttons themselves inside the frame here. So, okay, there we go. Now let's say pack the frame. And here, let's say define the buttons. Now we need a lot of buttons. So let's go self dot. And I'm going to call the first one button underscore one. And that's going to be a button. We want to put it in self. We want the text to equal one. And let's give this a font of Helvetica with size 24. We're going to make these nice and big. So I'm just going to copy this and we're going to paste this a bunch of times. So, so we need three buttons per row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That'll be our numbers from one to nine. We also need a button zero, a button for plus minus to make it positive or negative. We need an equal to button. And then we need a plus button, a minus button, and a multiply button, and then a divide button and a clear button. So we've got a lot of buttons here, right? So let's come through here and change these names. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's call this one zero. Let's call this one negative. You'll see what I'm talking about with that one in just a second. And this is going to be our equal to button. Then we need a plus button, a minus button, a multiply button, a divide button, and I think this one's going to be our clear button. So now we need to come in here and change these as well. So bear with me, a little bit tedious here, but not too bad. We'll just kind of run through here to knock these out real quick. This one is going to say plus slash negative. And that'll change the number from positive to negative. So if you want to have like negative four times two, you would type four and then hit the plus minus button. It'll change it negative, right? So all right, plus minus. Uh, this one's going to be equal to 
This one's going to be a plus sign, a minus sign, <laughs> and we'll use a star for the multiplication. You might use an X also, but I like star. And then divide, we'll use the forward slash, and for clear, we'll just have it say clear. Okay, so we've defined all of these things. Now, in the future, we're going to give these commands as well, but for right now, we don't need commands. We're just kind of creating the GUI and getting things all set up. So here, let's grid the buttons to the screen. Now, up here in our app, we used pack. And then we created a new frame. Inside that frame, I want to grid everything because I want to put them in rows. So anytime you want to do rows and columns, it's usually easier to use the grid system. And we can do that inside the frame so long as everything in that frame uses the grid system, right? So let's go self dot button underscore one dot grid. We want to give it a row of something and a column of something. We also want to give this an iPad X of 40 and an iPad Y of like 20. This will make the buttons bigger. So iPad is internal padding. So that's padding in the inside of the button. So they'll just expand them and make them a little bit bigger. Uh, some of these we're going to have to do pad X and pad Y, but we'll kind of muddle through that in a little bit. So I'm just going to copy this. <laughs> and once again, let's go to three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Okay, so again, let's come through here in two, three, four, five. It's a very exciting video, I know. Uh, go, this one's going to be zero. This one is negative. And this one is equal. Then here we have plus, minus, multiply, I spelled all those right. We'll find out shortly here. This is divide and this one is clear. Okay, so the row here is gonna be zero, 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 one, 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 two, 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 three, 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 four, 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 and finally five and five. See, that's why I kind of space these in groups of three, so it's sort of easier to do that. Uh, this is going to be column zero, one, two. These are all going to be the same zero, one, two, zero, one, two, zero, oh, all the way over here, one, two, <laughs> zero, one, two, and then zero and one. Now, this one, there's only two, right? The very bottom one. So let's give this a, oh, let's do it right here. Let's go call um, span equals two. So we want to stretch it over the last two columns. So, okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and save this and see what a horrible job we've done so far. Clearly I messed something up because this is a lot of code and I copied and pasted it a lot. Whenever that happens, I always mess something up. So let's save this and run it, head back over to our terminal. I'm in my C slash tkinter.com directory and let's run Python class underscore calc.py. When we do, okay, not too bad, really. So you'll see things are smushed up together. Some of these don't quite match because the text inside is bigger. So we need to sort of fiddle around with this. Now you can play with this by playing with the pad X and pad Ys. So, well, pad X, I guess, right? So let's go through here and do that. And you'll also notice these are spaced funny. So uh, we wanna put some space around all of these. Maybe, maybe we'll do that first, right? And let's start by giving pad X to the top row of, and we can use a tuple here. So the pad X tuple is left and right. So on the left side, we want nothing. On the right side, we want 10, right? So I'm going to copy this. We don't want anything in the middle button because this 10 here is going to give it some padding already. And then at the end, we want the opposite. We want 10 and probably zero, right? And I think this is what we're going to want for pretty much all of these ones. So let's just go through here and do each of these. There we go. And then also for the last one of each little group of three, we want it like that, I think. Uh, right, and then here, and then here. All right, that looks good. Let's save this and run it, see if that worked. 
Okay, so we've got some separation. All right, now we want also pad Y in between the rows, right? So let's knock that out real quick. We really don't need anything in the, the top row, but the second row, let's give each of these a pad Y of 10 or so. So I'll just come through here and give each of these, just there we go that I guess we could have done this in the first step when we first defined these but whatever. And there we go. Okay, so let's save this and run it. Alright, getting there, we've got some space in between each ones. Now these are still kind of messed up here. This might be a little off the clear button is definitely off and there's not a whole lot of space at the bottom we want to might want to expand that just a bit. Maybe let's do that real quick. Let's go. What? 850 maybe something like that. I don't know. How's that look? Yeah, maybe too much, but good enough for now. Okay, so now let's fix this and this clear button. So maybe we'll do the clear button first because that's going to be easy. Let's come down here to our clear button. And we gave it an iPad X of 40. We probably need to we need to make that much bigger because we want it to stretch all the way across there. So here I'm just kind of playing around with numbers and I think think a good one is 74. Now this is one way to do it. You can do this all kinds of different ways to have them expand automatically using different, uh, you know, fill options, but this is quick and easy. So we're just going to do it like this a little bit convoluted, but eh, good enough. Okay, so now it's stretching. It's not quite enough. So 74 wasn't enough. Let's come back in here and uh, let's try 84. I don't know. Not so smart after all, am I? <laughs> okay, so that's better. It's lined up here. It's mostly lined up here. Close enough. Now, this guy right here needs an extra padding, I think, because this button's for some reason a little small. I guess the I guess the divide sign is smaller font-wise. So uh, let's give this an iPad X of 42. Make it a couple bigger. I don't know. Uh, it's a little bit better, but man, we might go a little bit more. I don't know. Good enough for now. Uh, now let's shrink this one because this one's too big. So let's come up to the negative button right here. And instead of pad X 40, what do we want? Something like 32, maybe knock a lot off and see what it looks like. All right, that's a little better, still a little bit big. Let's knock off a little bit more. <laughs> let's go 31. I don't know. All right, pretty good. Now this minus is a little bit too small. Or maybe this plus is too big. I don't know. You can play around with this, make it look exactly the way you want. But for now, I'm going to call this done. So we've got our layout. Now, I don't want to get into a lot of the functionality in this video because it's getting a little bit long already. But let's just knock out the clear button. So that's super easy. I'm going to come up to the clear button here where we defined it. There it is. And let's give this a command of parent.clear. And remember, we use parent because we're in a sort of a subclass here, right? And it inherits the parent and we want to put all of our functions up here in our app class. So let's come up here to our app class. And let's define clear, we want to pass in self. Now notice this lines up with our init function, it's not inside the init function, it's outside of it, but yet still inside of our app class, right? So what do we want to do? Well, we want to clear the entry box. So that's just self dot my underscore entry dot delete. And we want to delete from zero to n. Zero is the beginning of the box end is the end of the box. And just just like that, super easy. We can come back over here, run this guy again. Now we type anything in here and click clear, boom, it disappears. All right. Oh, what else can we do? We've got a couple of minutes, let's do the positive and negative. So if I put in 12 and click this, I want to change that to negative 12. So how do we do that? Well, same thing. Let's come down here to our negative button. And let's give this a command of, I don't know, pause neg, <laughs> something like that. And but again, remember, this is going to be parent dot pause neg, right? So same deal. Let's come up here. And flip numbers, positive or negative. So let's define pause neg, we want to pass in itself. And here, let's take out this comment, and put it above. 
So here I want to create a variable and I'm going to call it, I don't know, our number, or let's just call it number. And that's going to be whatever is in self dot my underscore entry dot get. Now we're going to put this to a variable because the next thing we want to do is self dot my underscore entry dot delete from zero to end because we want to delete whatever's in there because we're going to re add it back in as negative or positive. But once we delete it, whatever's in there is gone. So that's why I've assigned it to this number. So let's get whatever is in the entry box. Then let's delete entry box. Now let's flip the number sign negative slash positive. So to do that, lots of different ways we can do this. Ultimately, what we want to do is self dot my underscore entry dot insert. And we want to insert at zero position right at the beginning of the box. What do we want to put? Well, we want to put whatever our number is, right? But we want to multiply that by negative one. So if it's a negative number, a negative times a negative is a positive, it'll flip it positive. If it's a positive number, a positive times a negative is negative, it'll make it negative. So it'll just flip whatever it is. And then we could just insert that back in the way it is. So, okay. Then we can just insert that back into our entry box. So, all right, let's go ahead and save this, see if that worked. So let's go 21, boom. Uh oh, something's gone wrong. What do we do? Ah, anytime you grab something out of an entry box, it's a string. And we don't want to deal with strings. We want to deal with numbers, integers. So we need to convert this whole thing into an integer, right? Uh, we could have probably done that up here. We could have went like uh, int that. Maybe that's a little bit easier to sort of wrap our brains around. So I don't know, let's do it like that. So, okay, that should work now. So let's come back here, run this guy again. Type then 21, all right, negative. Now, if we click this button again, boom, it disappears back, changes it to positive. Negative, positive, negative, positive. Very cool. One last thing, if there's nothing in here and we click this, uh-oh, we get a big angry error because we need to make sure that there's something in the entry box. And we could do that just by doing some logic. So let's go if self dot my underscore entry dot get just have everything into this little if statement. And that's really all we need to do. If we save this and run it, let's clear the screen. Now, if we click this button, no angry error. But if we type in a number, it still works the way it should. All right, very cool. And we can still clear the screen. So, okay, pretty good. Not much to it. Again, this seems kind of sloppy and you can maybe play around with for loops to like loop out these buttons, but ah, it's too much trouble. And this works just as well. It's just a lot of code, but I like that it's all sort of separated into its own class away from kind of the logic and the functions of our program that we're going to be building out in the next video. And very cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book in your email address and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. You get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com and I'll see you in the next video.